In today's session, as a day three, we'll see how to create a user in the Fusion applications. Okay, user creation. The user, what we create in the fresh instance that we call as implementation user. Okay, first we have to create implementation user. We have to create the implementation user. So when we are part of implementation team, we get instance link. Okay, instance URL will get from the our project team, our project manager, or from client team. With that, we can connect to the instance. We can log into the instance, and we have to create our own user. We can proceed with the same user also, but reality, we create separate users for finance one user, SCM one user, for PPM. This is how we. Different consultants will work on this insta in this implementations. So for each consultant, we create separate users. What are the user we create in the fresh instance as a part of implementation? That user we call as implementation user. Why you are creating user for implementation purpose? If you want to create implementation user, what is the process we have to follow? And what are the roles we have to assign to the user? We have to understand. Say, for example, we are going to create implementation user called as ERP tree. When you create implementation user called as ERP tree, which roles we have to assign to this user? Here roles means which allows the user to access the application. Okay, roles. We have different type of roles that we will discuss later, but now those are not required. So take simple term roles. When you create implementation user for implementation purpose, we have to allow that user to instance environment with a roles concept. By default, we have to assign the two roles. Okay, by default, we have to assign the two roles. Those two roles are application implementation consultant role. The second role is IT security manager. These two roles we have to assign to user, which user is going to work as a Implementation consultant. These two roles we have to assign application implementation consultant and the IT security manager. If you assign these two roles to any user, that user will have a full privileges to instance to work as a consultant. What is the purpose we have to assign application implementation consultant role to user? If you assign application implementation consultant role to any user that user can do the setups. Setups, or you can say configuration, both are same. Setups are configuration. Say, for example, I want to implement tables application. I want to implement, I want to use accounts payable application. If you want to use accounts payable application, we have to complete minimum setups. We have to arrange that accounts payable application as per the business requirements. That we call as a setups or you can call as a configuration. If you want to do the setups for all these applications, if you take any application here, for all these applications, if you want to do any setups, we need access to application implementation consultant role. This role will allow us to do the setups in payables, receivables, fixed assets, general ledger, purchasing, any application, you take any application, you will be able to do the setups. And what is the purpose of IT security manager? If you assign this IT security manager to any role, any user, okay, if you assign this IT security manager role to any user, that user will be able to create new users from this IT security manager privileges. Okay, with the help of IT security manager, what we can do? We can create the new users. We 
with the help of id security manager we can create new users and the roles we can assign to other users also okay or say role management roles management we'll understand all this very soon but try to take this term analysis or points what we are trying to understand here so when you create implementation user these two roles we have to assign the purpose of these two roles are like one is for the purpose of doing the setups other role is to create the new users and to manage all the roles what oracle is providing or else as per our business requirement we can create the new roles whatever the new roles we create those we call as custom roles okay whatever the roles we create we call it as a custom roles we'll have a separate session on that related to roles how to create the new roles and how to copy how to modify okay what roles or at least providing everything we'll discuss in that session for now take this simple points so any questions on this point please any questions from anyone please so lakshman uh, hi good morning please. um these all we need to apply when we open up a new instance right and we have to give it to the person who are using correct who is going to work as a consultant for that you that is me you have to assign okay. these roles if i get a job then it will be me right correct correct okay so the company usually gives you all the the company you has to give you all these information right exactly exactly when you are part of implementation team you will get access to instance and they will provide one username with that you can log into the instance and create your own user and assign these two roles to start working on that instance as a consultant okay yeah so these roles not for the business users who are working for payables or receivables this this roles for only consultants okay only for implementation purpose so with these roles you cannot create any transactions okay these roles only for implementation consultants with these roles you cannot create invoice in the payables or payment in the receivables you cannot create transaction receipt is all you cannot do anything these all transactions you cannot create if you want to create the transactions we have a separate roles those we will discuss later okay these roles only for consultants we are going to work as a consultant so that means we need these roles access to our user any questions please sir uh, good morning what is mean by custom role what is a mean by custom role uh, you say no creating new we call as a custom anything customizations or development creating the new new page okay creating the new report create uh, creating some interfaces is all we are calling as customizations right in the same way yeah. if you are creating the new role oracle is providing many roles we will understand what roles they are providing what purpose apart from that if we need new role that we can create that new role only we call as custom role okay thank you yeah thanks any other questions yeah is yes, uh, lakshman sir so Please. the application implementation role we will uh, give the access Appli application implementation consultant role yeah what what you are saying about so this we we provide access to the user and what no, no, it is one second one second no yeah, yeah. we don't provide to the user okay we provide to ourselves okay okay not to business users only for consultants these roles only for consultants okay so it security manager also you can uh, create role only for consultants yeah yeah for consultants only these two roles we use for consultants if any user is working for ap accounts payable application we have ap roles to create invoices and payments if user is working for ar receivables department we have separate roles application wise we have a separate roles that allows the business users to create the transactions now we are not talking about it 
Okay. But we are ready with the setups. We will discuss about those also. Okay. Thanks. Yep. Now we are talking about consultant. Yep. Means okay. we we are learning this after completing this course. We learn how to work as a consultant. When you are in the project, you have to create one user for yourself, and you have to assign these two roles so that you can start working on that instance as a consultant to implement fusion applications. Okay, sorry, I'm not clear on the second one. So IT manager, he also create new user for only for consultants, consultants. No, no, okay. IT security manager can create for another consultants or business users also, anyone. Okay, okay. The reality as a consultant, why we have to create the users for business users only. There may be 20 people who are working for Pegus department. As a consultant, with the help of IT security manager, we create 20 users for payables. Okay. So that's how we create. Thanks. Yeah. Any other questions here? Yeah, Lakshman sir, uh, actually you are saying the application implementation role is for uh, only consultant. So in this role... Both, uh, not only one, these two roles for consultants only. Okay, so in this role, the transaction uh, entered. Uh, not uh, possible. Access. These roles not for transaction creation. These roles only for setups. If you want to create the transactions, we have separate roles. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So to do those some sessions, uh, we can have in, uh, in, in testing sense, right? Sorry. To do some testing, uh, like a transaction mm. before implementation. We can have in uh, uh, transaction roles as well, right? Yes, yes, yes. We are going to see all those. Yeah, that's what that's what we call as the implementation process. Okay. Okay. So if you are going to work on, or say your implementation duration is say eight months, almost six months we'll work on the test instance only. Mm -hmm. Yeah. During okay. that period, we'll create user and we'll do the setups. Payable roles we can assign to this user. Receivables role will assign to the user after setups are completed. We will test about whether those invoices or payments we are able to create or not will show to the client. That's how we have to work on the system. Okay. So like ERP, we have uh, uh, like our menus lookup for all the things are there in Fusion as well. Yes, lookups and all we have. Menus we don't have. <clears throat> We will see. Like, if you wait for some time, you'll come to know those instead of discussing. <laughs> okay, fine. Thank you. Yeah. Because see, in EBS, if you talk about EBS, there we have a roles concept, responsibilities concept, right? Right, right. In Fusion, instead of responsibilities, we have roles. Okay. If you are from EBS background, you need access to application system administrator responsibility to start with the setups, right? Right, right. In Fusion, you need access to these two roles. That's all. Okay, got it. Thank yep. you. These two roles are equal to your EBS system administrator responsibility. With a system administrator responsibility, what you can do for each application, you can create responsibilities and you can do the setups and you can create the new users, right? Right, right. The same here, equal. Okay, thank setups you. Setups for user. Uh, Lakshman sir, at this point, I'm not getting creating new users, IT security manager. Can you just once again tell? No. See, as a ERP tree user, I will log into the instance. Okay. I will connect to the instance. You need one user who will create. I can create. Because I got access to IT security manager role that will allow me to create the user for you or somebody else. Got it? Okay, sir. Yeah. Now we'll see. I'll log into the instance with one user. From that user, we will create the user so that you can understand. We'll see in the system. Okay. We'll see in the system. Now I'm going to log into the instance with one user. From that user, we will create the new user. We'll understand how to create the user and how to assign these roles. We'll go through. Let's connect to an instance. For our practice, we will provide one username and password. With that, 
credentials, you can connect to this instance and you can follow the same process. I'm going to connect to this instance with this username, Geo, and click on sign in. This is a cloud instance. Okay, this is a SaaS, SaaS environment. For functional consultants, it is, whether it is SaaS or PaaS, it doesn't make any difference. Okay. Now our target is user creation. That's all we'll see later. Our target is user creation. To create the user, click on this bar icons. Okay, there are bars that we call as navigator icon. Click on navigator icon. Now you can see one panel. Within this panel, go to tools section, tools, expand the tools. Click on expand, uh, click on the tools, it will be expanded. Under tools, what you see all these we call as a tasks, T-A-S-K, task. Okay, this is all we call as a task. Now what we want to create, we want to create the user. To create the user, click on security console. Security console. Click on security console. Ignore that message. Select users here. Press select users. Now we can create user from this page. To create the user, click on add user account. I'll repeat once again. Okay, we'll share you the instance URL for our practice and we will give you one username and password with the same you can connect to the instance. Provide username and password, sign in. Okay, very soon we will understand all these, what you are able to see here, everything will come to know, but now those are not required. Our target is user creation. Go to navigator icon. Okay, just click on navigator icon. This is how the panel will be open. Now expand tools, expand tools. Click on security console. Security console is one of the tasks. Click on security console task. Now select users. Select users, click on add user account. Here we can create the new user. Okay, let's create user called as ER Pitri. Okay, provide last name. And uh, first name is not mandatory, provide last name. If you provide last name, the same last name system will take as a username. Just copy. Okay. So providing last name, use tab from keyboard. It will copy the same name as a username. And here you can set the password. Okay, you can set the password and you can confirm the password. So what is the password policy? It's a very simple, at least eight characters, one number. We can set our own password policy also. Okay, we can set our own password policy. We'll see all those. For now, we'll create the user. Okay. Set password to this user and confirm the same. We provided password. Last name uh, and uh, username is uh, same. Should we same or not? No. When you enter last name, automatically system is copying the last name as username. You can set other rule also. Yeah. Okay. Whether it so we can email ID mandatory and email ID to take as a username. Those all uh, we can set. I'll, I'll take you through all those. Okay. Right. So user category, is the default, is there any other? Explain. Explain. With the user category only, we can set all those. I'll explain. Okay. okay. Let's see first. Okay. Let's see what I'm going to talk about. I'll cover all those. Okay. I given last name. Last name system is taking as username and I provided password. I confirm the same password by following this password policy. Now I can click on save and close so that my user is ready and 
we can assign the roles later or else if you want to assign the roles now itself you can click on add roles by clicking on add roles you can assign those two roles to this user we'll assign the roles later first we'll complete the user creation okay say so save and close Let's click on save and close user is created you can find the same user from here we are petri click on search The display name is ERP tree. The username is ERP tree. Yes, we didn't provide any email ID. And status is active, locked. The user account is not locked. If user account is locked, yes, you cannot log into the instance with this username. And here, go to actions. Go to actions. So if you want to lock this account, you can lock it. Okay. And if you want to reset the password, yes, you can reset the password to this user. Okay, let's see how to reset. Click on reset password and select manually change the password. And you can set the password. You can change the password. You can enter new and if you confirm the password will be changed. Say reset password. And So delete, you can delete the user, okay? You can delete the user. If you delete, you don't find the user from this page, but it will remain in the database with the same name. Again, it won't allow you to create one more user, but we never delete users, okay? We never delete users. And other options are compare user and copy user. That we can understand later. One user you can compare with another user, how those users are different at all. We can do that. In the actual, we have a concept of the end date user. So there is any concept in fusion? No, no, no end date here. Okay. We cannot set. Okay, you can set password expiry and all. That's all. You can inactivate, you can lock that account. If you don't, after such, say in EBS, we said after uh, like by end of August, okay, the user, you want to set end date. So end of the August, you can- Please go on mute, try to understand. Yesterday also I could hear the same voice. Okay, when you are attending the session, please make sure that you are on mute. Please go on mute. Rejecting that participant. Remove. Okay, we'll proceed. Okay, if you don't want to allow any user not to connect to the instance, like which is equal to end dating the user, here is simply you can lock it, lock account. Say yes. Now this user cannot connect to the instance. This user cannot connect to the instance. If you want to allow that user to connect to the instance, click on the username, click on edit. Again, you can unlock. So we don't have option of giving end date for the user. Okay, you can give expiry date and all, all those you can set for the user, but end date you cannot set. So that's how you can create the user. Lakshman, can we do this again, once again, how to lock it and how to unlock it? Please. You can play the video, I did two times. Already did two times. Okay. Again, we'll just we'll after some time we are we will we'll see that we'll, we'll log in with our own user. You can understand once again if you want to understand. Now, I want to assign the roles to this user. Okay, I want to assign the roles to this user. To assign the roles to this user, click on username. You can click on display name or username. Click on edit. Okay, click on edit. Now here you can see one tab called as add roles. Click on add roles. 
here we can assign those two roles. What roles we have to assign to the user to have a full privileges to work as a consultant on this instance is two roles. We'll go and assign. Here you can search for the role called as application implementation consultant. Application. Okay, you just type application and don't type the full name. Don't type the full name what we discussed. Just type application implementation only. Application implementation. Now here you can see with application implementation, we have many roles. We have application implementation administrator, application implementation consultant, application implementation manager. Okay, three roles we have, administrator, consultant, and manager. The other roles are similar, like see here, application implementation administrator, application implementation administrator, same, role name is same, code is different. This is starting with ORA ASM, this is starting with ASM. Role name is same, codes are different, that ignore it. What are the double roles we have that ignore it, but try to understand. We have application implementation administrator, application implementation consultant, application implementation manager. Okay, with application implementation, you can see primarily three roles. Those are administrator, consultant, and manager. Who will have a full privileges to the system? Consultant role only. If you assign administrator and manager, you cannot have full privileges which are equal to consultant role. So always we have to assign consultant role to our user. Search for consultant role. Here you can see role called as application implementation consultant. Again here application implementation consultant. And Oracle is providing the two copies of the same role where role codes are different. It is starting with ASM, it is starting with the ORA. There is difference how these roles will behave, but privileges point of view, equal privileges will have in these two roles. Okay. So what is the difference between ORA and without ORA? We have one session called as roles customization, new roles creation, there we will discuss. For now you can select any role, both are same, both will have a same privileges. Okay, role name should be application implementation consultant. Somebody copied the roles and they created these two roles. See here, application implementation consultant copy, application implementation consultant copy. It is starting with ORA, it is starting with ASM. These two roles somebody copied. Whatever the roles you see, somebody copied, ignore it. Okay, ignore it. In the fresh instance, you see these two only. Or else in some instances, they'll provide only one. We don't need two. Some instances, Oracle is providing two. And in some instances, they are providing only one. One is enough for us. You can choose any one of these. These two are very much equal. Okay, I'm selecting role called as application implementation consultant. Doesn't matter what is the role code. I'm selecting this. Okay, application implementation consultant. Now this role we have to assign to the user. To assign to user, select this role. Okay, select this role. Click on add role membership add role membership is nothing but assign the role to user assign role to user that we are calling as add role membership click on add role membership the role is assigned you can see in the background application implementation consultant role is assigned to erp3 user now we have to assign one more role another role is it security manager Okay, IT security manager. You see here, IT security manager. Also, you can type the full name. Okay, IT security manager. IT security manager. Also, you can see two copies here. IT security manager, IT security manager. Codes are different. In some instance, you get two, some instance one. But doesn't make any difference. You can choose any one of these. If you get two in any instance, what is the difference? I will explain in the role customization session. So for now, nothing will prevent us using any one of those roles. 
So you select any one of the role. We need role call as IT security manager. Doesn't matter. The code is ORA or directly FND. Select IT security manager role. Click on that role. Okay, this role also somebody copied. They copied and they written the description as a do not use. They might have did some changes to this role. So select IT security manager and click on add role membership. Now click on done. You can see two roles we assigned to this user. Click on save and close. Now, other point here is the two roles what we assign to this user, these roles we call as seeded roles. Seeded roles means what roles Oracle is providing, those we call as seeded roles. We can create new roles as per our business requirement. We'll see all those in the separate session. Okay, just remember application implementation consultant and IT security manager, these two roles we call as seeded roles. Seeded roles are nothing but Oracle delivered roles or Oracle provided roles. Whatever the roles Oracle is providing in the fresh instance, when we are going to work for any implementation, whatever the instance our client will get in that instance, whatever the roles you see, those we call as seeded roles, okay, which comes along with the product those we call as seeded roles. Now we assign these two seeded roles to this user. With the help of this application implementation consultant role, this user can do the setups. To do the setups, this user need access to FSM. Okay, FSM. If you assign application implementation consultant role to any user, that user will get access to FSM. FSM stands for Functional Setup Manager. Functional, see, Setup Manager. Okay, functional setups, not technical. Functional setups means without any coding and all to perform the setups. Okay, so we'll have an environment that we call as Functional Setup Manager. So this user will get access to FSM because of this application implementation consultant role so that this user can do the setups with the help of FSM. How this user can get access to FSM because of application implementation consultant role. The same way, if you assign IT security manager role to this user, this user can create the new users and this users can manage the roles or else roles can be assigned to another user. All activities this user can do. If this user wants to create new users and role management, this user need access to security console. Okay, this user need access to security console. If you assign IT security manager role to any user, that user will get access to security console. Okay, that user will get access to security console. That user will have access to security console. This is what we have to understand. The application implementation consultant role will give the access to any user to access FSM so that that user will be able to do the setups from FSM. If you assign IT security manager role to any user, that user will get access to security console. From security console, the user will be able to create the new users and roles can be managed. This is what we have to understand. Any questions here, please? Uh, you said that you were showing the instance of uh, SaaS environment, so it will be different something in SaaS environment also. No, no, no. Anything can be anything. Everything will be same. Okay. Uh, yeah, Lakshman. So uh, for UAT, PVT, we use the same instance here. Yes. Right. Instance only we use. Any questions here, please? Yeah, please. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like creating uh, user. Noise is very uh, low. Yeah. Same time. No, no, okay. Noise. Now, okay. Now it's fine. Please. Hello? Yeah, 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 Lakshman. While creating user uh, on, the, on the user screen, we have uh, 
seen two uh, two options like active and locked. What is active? What is the function of it? Active means if user account is active, you can access the instance. Even user is active if the account is locked, you cannot log into the instance. Okay. So by making inactive, we can't access the instance. Yes. So making okay. inactive also. You cannot allow the user to have access to instance. Oh, got it. Thank you. We are filing the password expiration the default date, or we can set. No, no, no. I'll I'll tell you that. Uh, everything I'll cover. We can set the password policies and all. Okay. Once we are clear about it, I'll I'll take you through that uh, section. Any questions here, please? No. No. we will log into the instance as a erp tree user and we will verify the erp tree user got access to fsm to do the setups with the help of application implementation consultant and this erp tree user got access to security console to create the users and role management because of it security manager or not we will check this too okay uh lakshman i have a question so how different is uh, the implementation team and the transmission team here uh i mean uh the setup and all is done by the execution team and uh the payment transmission again will be taken care by uh, transmission team mm. I mean, how is that uh, team divided into based on the roles yeah see who, who is going to perform the setups those the team people required access to these two roles ideally like if they are going to perform the setups only application implementation consultant role is required okay mm -hmm. after that if they are going to work on the transactions which application related transaction process they are working that application specific roles we have to assign okay yeah not it yeah and how different is sit again i mean have you know about the uat fint and pvt so there there is some testing uh, which yes it i mean uh, i mean the it team perform that is called yes it mm -hmm. so even uh, for this i mean for this instance if somebody get an access he can perform the yes it uh, testing as well yes for testing and all will assign which application they have to test say they have to test tables we assign the tables roles to the those users mm -hmm. Okay. Going to work for receivables testing. We'll assign receivables roles. We never give access to these roles. These roles for consultants. So a consultant only is testing. So along with this, we'll assign those application roles to consultant. Okay. Now I got it. That's how we can assign. Maybe few sessions we have to wait. We will see that as this what we are discussing. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Hi, Lakshma. Yeah, please. Um, actually, um, this voice one... is very low. Voice is very low. Um, yeah, now. Oh, yeah, now it's okay. Ah, uh, yeah. Actually, I'm new to this one. Ah, uh, what is SIT? UAT? I know that the user acceptance. Test. SIT uh -huh. means what? So, since somebody asked that question, I answered. You will learn all those things as a part of real time implementation process. I'll cover all those. Oh, oh. Yeah. Don't worry about those. We are going to discuss about everything: real-time implementation process, support process, upgrade process, what documents we prepare. Okay, so everything okay. we are going to discuss there will come to know many things which you are not at all aware. Yeah, we'll see that. Right now, so we'll go and verify. We'll go and verify this user got access to this. FSM under security console or not? Now you can sign out from this user. Don't play with this uh, Zoom and all. Somebody has started doing drawing and all. Okay, please <laughs> attend the session, please. Oh, sorry, it's me only. That is oh, by okay. mistake. Okay, fine. No issues. Yeah, fine. <clears throat> now you can log into the instance as a erp tree user just now we created erp user so erp tree and provide password sign 
Sundar, I have one question. Can I ask? Uh, Lakshmi, sir. Please, please go ahead. Sir, uh, this is the user ID created for me. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and then I have logged in through my user ID. The okay. instance which I am having a view, uh, when I'm searching my user ID, I will get only my user ID, right? No, no, no. Any user ID you can get because you have access to IT security. Okay. Okay. And sir, uh, maybe I want to see how many users have what kind of access uh, means roles can. assigned. Everything roles are assigned. Okay. We have to wait for some time to know all those things. Yes, everything. Because you are going to work as a consultant. No restrictions. Okay, sir. Okay. Thank you. Business, business users will have a restrictions. Okay. They are, they are working on which process accordingly they will get access. When we are working as a consultant, we will have access to entire environment. Anything we can do. Okay. So we can query which user everything have. We can. Everything okay. we can do. Everything is possible. Right? If you assign these two roles to any user, everything is possible related to functional. Now we will check. This user got access to FSM or not. Where you can verify whether this user got access to FSM or not. Click on username. Okay, just click on username and click on task called as setup and maintenance. Okay, once you click on the username, it will open the panel. In this panel, you can see setup and maintenance. If you see setup and maintenance for this user, that means this user got access to application implementation consultant role. If application implementation consultant role is assigned to this user, then only the user can see the task called as setup and maintenance. If you click on this setup and maintenance task, this task will take us to FSM page. Click on setup and maintenance task. It will take us to FSM page. This we call as FSM page, functional setup manager page. With the help of functional setup manager, what we can do? We can do the setups. Say, for example, I want to do the finance setups. Here I can select financials. Click on drop down, select financials. We know what are the applications we have in the financials. We discussed already, right? These are the different applications. Okay. So you can select any one of the application to do the setups. We selected financials. Within that, we have a general ledger. We have payables. I'm selecting general ledger. And here I can select all tasks. These are the setups which you have to perform for general ledger. If you want to do the setups for receivables, you can select receivables. Okay, here you can say all tasks. These are the list of tasks which we have to complete to implement receivables application. If you complete all these setups, you can start using the receivables. If you are going to implement fixed assets application, select fixed assets, select all tasks. So you have to complete these setups so that you can create assets in the fixed assets and you can calculate depreciation. You can do any asset related activities. Okay, in the same way, cash management and the banking. These are the cash management related setups so that you will be able to create the bank accounts and you can do the bank statement reconciliations, et cetera. So this is how you can do the setups from this FSM. How this user got access to FSM because of application implementation consultant. We verified our user got access to FSM. From FSM, we can do the setups. Now we will check our user got access to security console or not. To check whether this user got access to security console or not, you can click on user uh, navigator icon. Within the navigator section, go to tools, expand it. Under tools, you have a task called as security console. This user got access to security console because of this IT security manager role. If you assign IT security manager role to any user, that user will get access to security console section. From security console, this user can create the new users and this user can assign the roles. We will see, we'll create one user, okay, from this ERP tree. 
I have one question. Uh, can we create multiple uh, implementation users? Because yes. in real time scenario, we are yes. sharing the responsibility. Answer is yes. Answer is yes. So when you do the implementation, there may be five, um, five or 10 members teams. We can create the separate users for every consultant or else all consultants can use the single user also. Anything is possible. Our target is completing the setups and doing the implementation. Possible. <clears throat> okay. We connected to the instance as ERP tree user. Now we'll see how to create the user from this user. Uh, tools, okay, expand tools, go to security console and create user. Click on add user account. I'm giving user as XYZ ERP and I'll set the password. I'm not assigning any roles to this user. Okay, I'm not assigning any roles to this user. Okay, done. Now, if you come to this user, okay, ERP tree, we are able to see many, right? If you click on the username, okay, you can see many tasks within this panel. In the home page, you can see this dashboards or infolets you can call. Okay, many tiles you can see here different, different sections. This is all what you see in this navigator, those only or we are able to see here. So this is all. We are able to access to all these because of application implementation consultant and IT security manager roles. Now we created one user called as XYZ ERP. Let's log into the instance with that user. Sign out from this user. Login as a XYZ ERP user. We didn't assign anything to this user. Click on username. There is no setup and maintenance task and many other tasks are missing in this. This user cannot do any setups since there is no setup and maintenance task is not available. Click on navigator. So earlier we have seen for ERP tree user, if you click on the navigator, there's a big list of sections, but here very limited tools we have. But if you go to tools, the tools, there is no security console. The reason we didn't assign any IT security manager role to this user. If you assign, you will see same as ERP tree user access. Okay. So this is what we have to understand. Now, again, we'll connect to the instance as a ERP tree user. I'll take your questions. Now, any questions based on what we discussed and what we have seen in the system? Any questions here? No. Now, we'll talk about when you create a user, how you want to create the user. System has to take the last name as a username or else you want to provide the email id as a mandatory system should take email id as a user login name and uh, how password expiry policy should work okay all these points we can set up how to set up we will see so go to user creation page tools security console from security console we can create the users Go to users. Okay, here find our user. Our user is ERP tree. Click on search. Click on display name or username. Okay, here you can notice at the time of user creation, system is selecting user category as the default. Okay, just click on edit. System selected user category as a default. Within this user category, you can set the password policy and the user creation policies and all you can set in the user category. Okay, so system selected default as per default, we, we have to provide the 
username last name as a mandatory the same last name it will take as a username and password policies also we have seen now we'll see how to create our own password policies by using the user category concept the same security console we are in the security console only go to user categories okay go to user categories here you can open default user category which we use for our user click on default and click on edit now here see username generation rule within the default user category user name generation rule is first name and last name we entered only last name so system took last name as username if you provide first name and last name first name is optional that is the reason we didn't provide if you provide first name and last name by combining that system will create the username okay to create the username go to password policy here you can see these are the policies which are applicable just click on edit so days before password expires okay now how many days password need to be expired 90 days days before password expired warning system system will expire every user password in 90 days within this instance but system has to give the warning to the users intimation in how many days before 10 days before okay so hours before password reset token expire just it is a different it will send the link to the user account and all the email id whatever you provide there in how much time like it can wait to reset the password by following the link and all so that's how you can set in the same way password complexity when you set the password for the user so what kind of like a complexity you want to set this is a simple one here minimum eight characters minimum one digit that's all you can change say select complex complex means minimum eight characters minimum letter in a one letter in the uppercase minimum one digit you have to provide very complex so eight characters one uppercase okay one special character one digit and custom you can set okay you can set when you create the user to set the password what is the policy you want to implement okay so i'll say minimum character should be okay 10 and minimum minimum letters in uppercase minimum one uppercase should be there one lower case should be there okay and uh, minimum digits minimum two digits we have to enter minimum two special characters should be part of password this is how you can set how you require you can set so this is all where we are setting in the user category which is a default okay which is a default within the default the same way we can create our own let's create our own for our testing purpose okay so from users we are moving to user categories that's all go to user categories let's create okay click on edit you can give the name as erp i'm giving the category user category name as erp here i'll change the policy okay so email okay user system has to take email username that means when you create a user email will become mandatory will provide the email the same email it will take as a username or else we have some other rules also from, from first name it will take the first letter then it will take the last name with that combination it will create the user okay or else person or party name this is the different when you create the employee users there it will be useful as of now you can see this okay, i'm selecting a, uh, email they'll say save and core close okay new user category i'm creating to set username generation rule and password expiry all those we can set in this just wait for a moment it takes time to save these definitions okay 
and you can go and set password policies also. Okay. Here by default, this is what it is taking. You can accept or else if you want to change, you can change. Okay, it should expire in how many days, how many days before it should be warning. This is all what is a pass, uh, password complexity. This is all you can set. Complex and a minimum one digit also we have to enter. That's how you can set all this. And notifications and all like for users, how the notifications should be triggered. Okay, say for example, you create a new user and a notification should go to whom and all those whether notification need to be triggered to that user account, whatever the email ID they are providing, all the different different notifications. Okay, related to password uh, creation day. I mean, when you create a user, when the password is going to be expired. When password is regenerated, all these you can trigger the notifications. Okay, already notifications all are enabled. Everything system will trigger the notification whenever you deal with this user with the password expiry date and everything. Yeah, this is how we have. Now, let's create one user for our understanding how this template will be impact the user creation process. Click on add user account. Okay. I'll create the, I'll select the template. See here, template is default. This is default to Oracle is providing. Rest of all are created by somebody in this instance. Oracle is providing only default. Rest all these are created by people who are practicing in this instance. Okay, so default. I'm changing, since it's a default, last name is mandatory, username is mandatory. If you provide as per default, okay, it will combine first name and last name. It will create the username. So I given A and B, A dot B it is taking username. As per default, that's how we have rule. Now we are changing to the rule or uh, the category what we created. What is the category name we given? ERP. Select ERP category. Now see here it is enabling email ID as a mandatory. Okay. Here you can give any name. Okay, here you can give, you can give any name. Okay, it won't take anything. It is taking, wait for a second. It will take email ID only. ABC at the rate of gmail.com. As per our ERP user category, we given system should take the username as a email ID. So use tab, it will take email ID as a user. Then when you look at the password policy, place the cursor, it is showing eight characters, one uppercase, one number. That's what we specify. Okay, so that's how you can set the password. And say save and close. This is how you can create the user. Any questions here, please? Fine. No questions. Okay. Say so save and close. So that's how you can create user category, how you want to create the username, what password policy should be applicable when you create the users and the expired related policies of everything you can set with the help of user category. So this is all about user creation. This user we call as implementation user. When users, when employees are going to work on the system, for them we create employee users. Employee user. Say one employee, employee name is Mr. X. X is working for payables. We assign payables related roles. Payables roles we assign to that user so that that employee X can create invoices in the payables. They can process the payments. Okay, that's how we can assign the application specific roles to employee users. Now the user what we are creating is implementation user. If you want to create the employee user, we have to complete many setups. So completing many setups, then you can create employee user. We'll discuss whenever we can create an employee user, we'll create initial in the fresh instance, you cannot create the employee users. Only you can create implementation user. With the help of implementation user, you can start doing the setups 
once the minimum setups are ready you can create the employee user we'll discuss that you no need to think about employee user as of now so how to create implementation user we have to understand what are the minimum roles we have to assign to implementation consultant user so that they will be able to perform the setups they can involve in the implementation activities this is what we have to understand any questions please yeah hi lakshman yes. erp erp tree user created xyz user right correct yeah if you want to delete we can delete xyz yes erp only has a right to anyone delete. anyone anyone Not access to security console okay but in that in this case uh, xyz doesn't have a security concern so it, it, it cannot be delete erp right correct, correct exactly okay okay right thank you yeah. so xyz erp we created so this erp tree user got access to security console in the security console only you can find all the users now this erp tree can delete this user if you practice please don't delete any users okay yep this user will be in the database this user will remain in the database but it won't be available for search here you have not find xyz erp but you cannot create one more user with the same name as xyz erp you cannot create it won't allow remember these points when you are practicing so don't delete users don't delete any users again you cannot create with the same name hi sir uh, yes. sorry um, if we have a data in the uh, yeah like a user so can we delete that user yes say you assigned roles to this user and you create a transactions still you can delete the user you create a tra transactions or you completed setups with that user that will be traced by system but once you delete okay with this user you cannot log into the system from this page you cannot see this user but in the back end this user will remain okay anything with that user if you delete that is only the issue hello sir please yeah can we restore this user again once we delete Not you can ask so thank you any other questions uh, sir uh, erp tree created uh, xyz user correct so they can assign the responsibilities like roles roles, roles. can be assigned yes yeah. yes that's what role management means assigning the roles and creating new roles many okay so from erp tree you can create number of users and you can assign the roles lakshman okay. can we delete the person type uh, user also sorry can we delete the person type employee users also yes 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 you can delete oh. okay uh, hi sir yeah please uh, if we have like uh, uh, suppose uh, i am the consultant and, and I, I have created one one user uh, okay. can the other consultant can can see that user yes anyone can see how you are able to create user how you are able to see the users i am asking the question how yeah. you are able to create the user i am got you sir no so you are saying you, you you will create user other consultants can see or not you are asking yes yes how you are able to see the users creation page and how you are able to create the users how you are able to see the existing users because of id security yes okay because of id security manager who has access to id security manager all those can see all those can create all those can delete all those can do everything what you are able to do okay yep. that's it i let me sir yeah please can we remove the role yes we can delete the role so now for this user i assigned one role just now i'll find that same user just now i assigned right i created this user click on edit here you have a delete click on delete delete it possible any other questions 
uh, don't we have an uh, i mean uh, replicate or mirroring uh, option available here what mirroring you want to do like a, yeah i understand there are only two access to be provided but if in case if you wanted to mirror user one access to user two is that possible so that is some delegation and all that you can do in case of approvals and all mm -hmm. okay here just only we have options for the purpose of copy user say in this user you have sent few roles and uh, this user got access to so and so the similar user you required you can copy it or else you can compare two users this user you can compare with another user the mirroring and all no, you cannot do it. some privileges approval related delegations and all you can do okay that you can do the mirroring no okay not it okay fine so this is all about user creation we'll discuss something else and we will see in the system after that any questions we'll discuss now let's talk about fsm okay let's talk please go on mute if you don't know fsm fsm stands for functional setup manager fsm stands for functional setup manager with fsm what we can do so within the fsm here we discuss different product families okay this we are calling as different product families financial financials is one of the product family the same with these all are different product families these all different product families as per fsm we call as offering okay we call as offering so offering this let me write here so financials we call as offering and hcm scm ppm crm these all we call as offering as per fsm this is the terminology we use for these product families by default these are product families we call them as a offerings as per fsm if you take example as financials offering i am taking financials offering within the financials offering what are the different applications we have these are the applications please look at the short names i am going to take the short names sap means accounts payables ar means account receivables fa fixed assets cm cash management gl general ledger i am going to take those names here so financials is one of the offering within that we have a applications like ap ar cm fa gl these applications as per fsm we call as options this is one option this is another option these are all we call as options just remember this terminology offering and option offering means specific product family financials we call as offering hcm we call as offering scm we call as offering ppm crm these all we call as offerings within that specific offering that means within that specific product family what are the applications we have those we call as options when we do the implementation for any client okay the very first step is we can create our own user after that which offerings and options we are going to implement for that client those we have to enable in the instance after creating our own user the next step is we have to enable offerings and options after enabling the offerings and options with those offerings and options we can create implementation project we can create implementation project so implementation project process is different from this implementation project remember this when you talk about implementation project the process is totally different here implementation project what we are going to create in the system purely for the purpose of doing the setups in implementation one of the activities is setups there are many activities all we will discuss when you talk about real time classes those classes will discuss very detail level now in the entire implementation one of the activities doing the setups 
to do those activities we have to create implementation project in our fusion okay so what is the use of implementation project in the fusion by using the implementation project creation in the fusion you can do the setups to perform the setups and to manage the setups in the system environment we are going to create implementation project this implementation project is not equal to the real implementation what we do real implementation means there are a number of activities which we do but here very specific activity that is all about doing the setups okay so by using implementation project you can do any application related setups and you can manage those setups and there are certain advantages with the implementation project we'll discuss all those okay so in the first instance when you are working for any client the first step is user creation okay when you create a user assign these two roles to your user and we have to enable offerings and options which are offerings and options we have to enable so which offerings and options we are going to implement for that client all those offerings and options we have to enable in the fresh instance if you enable those would be available to select into this implementation project okay we have to create implementation project into this implementation project we have to select required offerings and options so select offerings and options into implementation project say you are going to implement financials and seo now you can go and enable financials and scm okay enable financials and scm when you create implementation project you can select only financials and scm into this implementation project and you can do only financials and scm related setups only if you want to select ppm into this implementation project that is not possible the reason that is not enabled in this instance if you enable that only you can select into implementation project so that is the purpose first we have to enable offerings and options i'm creating implementation project i enable financials i'll select financials if you enable financials that is not enough here i we, we are discussing we have to enable offerings and options also here we have to enable options also so you enable only ap and ar okay you enable financials you enable ap and ar when you create implementation project you can select ap and ar from financials you cannot select these options into your implementation project that means you can implement only ap and ar only so this is how which applications we are going to implement as a part of that implementation those offerings and options we have to enable first after enabling we can create implementation project we can select which offerings and options are already enabled those only you can select into your implementation project and you can start working on those offerings and options to complete the setups so this is the point we have to understand there are few more points which you have to understand related to functional setup manager we will discuss all those based on these points any questions from any one please we will not implement the fa and gl setup if you select if you don't select you won't get all those into your implementation project that's all we will implement we will implement we will see all those for our example i am taking this we will we will implement all the setups right ap ar cm fa gl everything will implement not only this many we are going to implement you see big list is all is all is all is all many for our understanding purpose i am explaining i am taking example for your better understanding any questions please so we uh, can we enable the offerings and uh, options uh, in the latest stage for example initially we uh, uh, enable offering for financial analysis and yes after yes. some time we can uh, okay yes 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 at any point of time you can enable offerings and options at any point of time you can include those offerings and options into existing implementation project 
possible. Any other questions? No questions. I'll just take you through where you can see offerings and options. Okay. So in the instance where you can find the offerings and options, we'll go and see. So click on username, click on setup and maintenance. When you click on setup and maintenance, that means we are going to see FSM. That means we are entering into FSM. Setup and maintenance task is related to FSM only. Click on setup and maintenance task. This will take us to FSM page. Now this page is FSM. And we want to see offerings and options. Okay, offerings and options. After navigating to this page, here we have actions. We have actions. Click on actions. Select go to offerings action. Okay, click on go to offerings. Now here you can see all the offerings which Oracle is providing. These are the different, different offerings. So which offerings and options you are going to implement, those we have to enable. Take example of tables. Click on tables. Click on tables. This is practice instance. That is the reason you can see it's already enabled. In fresh instance, what we have to do is you have to click on this and you can click on opt-in features. Click on opt-in features. There we have to enable within the financials, which applications we are going to implement, nothing but which options we are going to implement, those you can select. You can see the description also, what we have inside of these financials. Okay. Assets means fixed asset, ledger means general ledger, cash cycle means cash management. You see all those here. Okay. So what we have to do? Just one second. Let me close this again. We'll, we'll take the navigation. Okay. So to go to offerings and options, click on set up on a maintenance task. Click on task list. Okay, here, okay, that uh, different navigation not required. Directly go to actions, click on go to offerings. So you can see all the offerings. Inside of the offering, you can have uh, options. I'm selecting financials. Okay, so within the financials, what you have, you can see here. The financials, they are providing the description. So within that, we have assets. Assets means fixed assets application. Ledger means general ledger application. Cash cycle means cash management application. Invoicing and payment means payables application. Accounts receivable, account receivables only. Collections, separate applications, advanced collections. Subledger accounting is one of the concept. It is not application. And tax configuration. Okay, they are not displaying expense. Expense also part of it. Okay, expense application also part of it. So that's what we have to understand. Now you see within this instance, financials offering is already enabled. The fresh instance, you see the status as a disabled. How to enable, we'll go and see. You can click on opt-in features. You click on opt-in features tab. That will take us to financials offering. Within the financials offering, what are the different options are available? You can see what you are going to implement for your client accordingly you can enable when you create the implementation project whatever you are enabling here those all you can select into your implementation project so here financials the financials within the financials what we have we have a general ledger application so if you enable financials automatically general ledger application will come will get enabled Without general ledger application, you cannot use finance application. That is a backbone. Okay. Without general ledger application, you cannot use any finance application. So whenever you enable financials, automatically system will enable this. 
Supplier invoice processing means payable application. So you are going to implement, you have to enable it. And expense. Expense is nothing but fusion expense application. If you are implementing, you have to enable it. If you are implementing fixed assets, enable it. Customer invoice processing is nothing but receivables. If you enable this, the rest all will be enabled, which are part of receivables application. Okay. And where is the cash management? Here you can see cash management. Here you can see. Here also you can see. If you are going to implement payables application, supplier invoice processing and supplier invoice processing means payables application. If you implement payables, automatically system will select cash management because in the payables, if you want to make the payment, you need bank accounts. For that purpose, cash management is required. Okay, you get cash management along with the payables and receivables also. Okay, separately, you don't need to select pay cash management application when you go for implementation. So in the fresh instance, generally you can find all these as a disabled. Okay, this is all you can find as a disabled. So whatever we are going to implement, we can enable. Okay, whatever we are going to implement, this is all we can enable. So that's how we can get ready with a specific offering and options. Okay, here, let's enable this. Just enable, wait for a second. Because this, this, these are very heavy loaded within this all the setups, okay, all the setups will be there. If you are implementing payables, what setups you have to do. If you are implementing receivables, what setups. All the information will be inside of these offerings and options. That's how these are connected. It takes time when you enable or disable. Fine, this is how you can enable. Here you can see futures. When you implement financials, okay, you will get all the futures. If some additional futures you are going to use in the financials, you can Click on this edit icon. Okay, it will show on top of the financials what are the additional futures you may implement. Those all you can enable. Say so along with the financials, so you are going to implement the GRC application, governance, risk, and compliance applications. You can enable it. Okay, you are implementing these financials applications for public sector and say for government organizations in US and all that you can set here. And that's how you can set what is applicable apart from the financials on top of it, what you want to apply, what additionally you are going to implement. Accordingly, you can enable all here. Okay. By default, what are the standard functionalities we have within the finance? All we will get as a part of those offerings and options. Anything else as per the business, if you want to ena enable, you can come to these features and you can enable accordingly system will allow you to implement that respect to futures or functionalities or process, whatever you call. The same way application wise also you can do that. But ideally what Oracle directly is providing that will allow you to access most of the features what are available. So this is how you have to enable. Okay, this is how in the fresh instance we have to enable. So even if you are not implementing specific application, if you enable, no issues at all. Okay, if you implement, if you enable, it would be available to do the setups. If you don't do the setups, anyway, you cannot use it. Okay, nothing wrong, even if you enable all, so you can do that. Okay. So these are the BA reporting, BA analysis, BA reporting we have in the fusion, for all those they are giving. Okay. You can see all this. The fresh instance, this is how you have to enable. From this page, you have to enable. So first you have to enable the financials offering. Within that financials offering, what are the applications you are going to implement? Enable all those, just click on that. So this is how you have to enable the offerings and options based on the scope of the implementation. As per your implementation scope, what you are going to implement. You in the sense, as a part of entire team, Say for client, we are going to implement SCM, procurement, finance, and PPM. So accordingly, you have to enable. You, when you look at these offerings, our better understanding you see here. So procurement, we have a separate offering. 
and ppm if you want to implement ppm the project execution management and the project financial management by combining these two offerings okay by combining these two offerings we call it as a ppm if you are going to implement hcm applications these two are sub option offerings workforce development workforce deployment okay workforce development and workforce deployment these two are equal to hcm when you talk about scm scm they are not giving as a separate offering they are what oracle it is at a time oracle did not introduce scm solution they introduced the complete scm solution phase by phase so that is reason each and every application they are giving as a separate offering so order management and product management which is related to inventory to support inventory in the fusion we have product management not only in inventory so all the inventory related setups we have to do with the help of product management in the fusion so if you are going to implement the supply chain management for order management select this order management for inventory select product management for purchasing select procurement within the procurement purchasing is one of the application you just click on purchasing procurement inside of the procurement we have a different applications you can see here click on opt-in features within the procurement we have purchasing application self-service procurement which is equal to i procurement and supplier portal okay nothing but i supplier procurement contracts that's how we have a different applications as a part of procurement offering like financials scm hcm procurement is one of the offering so if you are going to implement scm you have to select the procurement because purchasing is inside of the procurement only a self service procurement which is equal to i procurement and the supplier portal which is nothing but i supplier and procurement contracts and sourcing application these all are part of procurement okay so whatever we are going to implement for the client you have to enable all this okay in the fresh instance we have to enable all the offerings and options select financials okay select financials here you can see the finance description and finance offering is enabled and expand related documents to implement these financials okay what setups you have to do oracle is providing one document here the document is available in the pdf html or excel formats and associated features within the financials across all these applications what are the different features are available that also oracle is providing the documents in the different formats you can download in the pdf or excel formats these business objects and enterprise related applications okay nothing we can not useful for us will be information but not for us so you can download and you can see but in this stage not required once we start doing some setups if you go through you can understand at least so this is all about offerings and options from this is a page where we have to enable the offerings and options since this is a test instance you can see as enabled so in the fresh instance you will see the status as not enabled you go and enable so that it will be turned the status into enable so this is what we have to understand about offerings and options from where we can enable in the fresh instance any questions here please one second we done for today we done for today if you have any questions you can stay back if no questions no discussions thank you all see you tomorrow same time i have one question uh, like uh, in options can we change the naming conventions uh, for that like uh, usually uh, companies have their customized name like uh, we are using supplier here but some companies are using vendor instead of your name of the uh, supplier So by any chance you can change that naming convention. I am not uh, able to understand properly. I can understand, but not completely. Can you? Yeah, I I am saying there is a default uh, naming convention uh, in options. No, no, okay. you cannot change those. Those are C rate or RT provided. You have to use the same. See, you are not going to do anything with that. What you are going to implement that you are going to select. So once you do the implementation. so we will create the transactions in the different different pages we don't touch this yeah you cannot change the names over there okay whatever oracle is giving for offerings and options we have to accept the same names and we have to use 
Any other questions, please? Any questions from anyone? Yeah, hi, Lakshman, sir. Please. Yeah. Why is it video? Please, uh, it's no, a, no. all the time, default request. Okay, whenever you speak, please make sure that you have enough voice for us. Now open? Okay. Yeah, maybe, okay. Let's see, please yeah. go ahead. Clients will be charged on depending on this uh, enable offerings or uh, at the time of product buying, they will decide the type of offerings. No. First, client will take the subscription. As for their implementation, which applications, you can go to mute. Okay, some noise is coming. I'll answer to your question. Okay. Please, thank you. Fine. So, first, client will take the subscription. So, a client taking the subscription for only these three. Okay, only these three. Now, in the implementation, in this instance, we have to enable those three offerings. Inside of the offering, what are the options they take in the subscription, we have to enable. Nothing wrong if you enable additional offerings and options also, but you should not use those. Okay, say you take the subscription only for financials. If you enable procurement, no issues. Okay, Oracle is not going to charge anything. But without taking the subscription, if you start using the procurement, Oracle will just, I mean, uh, they'll come up with the penalties. Okay. If you enable, no issues. Okay. Say you, you didn't take any subscription for procurement, you can enable it in your instance. Oracle is not going to charge anything since you are enabling. After enabling, you have to do the setups and you have to use it. If you do those, Oracle will, for Oracle, you have to pay the penalties. This is what we have to understand. You can enable all the offerings. Oracle is not going to say no, they will allow, but you should not use. What you have to use, whatever the offerings and options you take in the subscription, those only you have to use after implementation. That's what we have to understand. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Uh, we'll be having some interface between financials and marketing and HCM like that. Yes, in in build we don't need to touch those. Okay. It's connecting but one application with another application. Say for example, how reality business process takes place. Accordingly, they are establishing that connectivity. So this application is general ledger application is connected with all the applications. Okay. The same way, like uh, the payables application is connected with this purchasing application. The purchasing application is connected with the inventory applications. Okay. Uh, so in that case, we need to enable answer. also. We need to enable the offerings accordingly or without enabling also it will. That is a by default. Okay. Not based on the enabling offerings and options. Okay. As applications, those are connected with other applications as per business process. Okay, there is no option to enable or disable this connectivity interfaces. You get by default in build. Okay. Yeah. Uh, sir, you said in the initial, in the beginning of the training that the custom role also we can create. Correct. We will create, we will have one separate session. Okay. okay not for today. Understand all those. Oh. How to create a custom role from the scratch? Otherwise, how to copy one role and how to modify? And what are the type of roles we have? Okay. How to compare one role with another role? How to simulate the role? There are many things which we have to understand. I'll take you through all those. Okay. Okay. Yep. Any other questions? Uh, Lakshman, I have one question. Uh, I can't I... hear you. I can't hear you. <laughs> Please. Okay. Now it is okay. I think some somewhat better improved. Uh, actually, I oh, want it's, to, it, it, it's a very good. Please go ahead. I want to know uh, how we can create a user for a specific period. In EBS, we enter the end date. Actually, uh, sometimes we required to uh, create some user for a specific period. So we enter the end date uh, in the current scenario in ER EBS. So how we can manage the same thing in uh, Fusion? I'm sorry, really, I didn't understand your question. What is your question? 
give end date in ebs we can give the end date for any user equal to that here you can inactivate the user that's what we discussed what is your question now so uh, uh, by default we get the two dates uh, start date and date in ebs correct when uh, the same thing uh, uh, no, no, no. that concept we don't have in the figure first of all there is no concept of giving start date and end date for any user if you create user today from today it would be active if you okay. activate and from the same date it would be inactive you cannot uh, do any operations with that user i mean you cannot log into the instance with that user same as ebs we don't have any giving end date dal in ebs you cannot delete the user only option is end date but here they give an option to delete the user but no option of giving start date and end date for user act user okay yeah okay. any other questions okay seems to no questions if no questions we can wind up for today we'll connect tomorrow same time thank you all